All right, so putting the CR10 SC together shouldn't be too hard. Let's go ahead and grab our manual. So we do get some Creality stickers, very nice. And after sales warranty card and the manual itself. So here we have a parts list of everything that's included. And then a step-by-step -step instruction guide here of how to put it together, adjust a couple things and get started. And here we have all the parameters of the printer. Looks like for the first step, they want us to put the light bar on top of the gantry, which doesn't make any sense as it would be kind of hard to do that while it's not connected yet. So let's go ahead and move to the next step here and connect the gantry to the base with four M545 bolts. And and that's these black long ones here. And they actually give you one extra as there's five. So let's go ahead and pull out this foam underneath. You guys can maybe see right here and on the other side is where the gantry is gonna sit. So if we just grab it with the back pointing towards the back like this, we're just gonna literally set it into those grooves. Being kind of careful, I'm gonna grab this pull here and put it underneath the printer. I guess here in the back seems to work better. So I have some room. Now you can, you know, go off the edge of the table or whatever, but yeah, we'll grab one of the bolts and we'll start it here by hand. So yeah, guys, not very hard. We'll grab the largest Allen wrench. I'm gonna run these bolts down, but we're not going to tighten them yet. Just kind of run them down. As we do want to start our other side and also, before we completely tighten them, we'll want to run our gantry down, which we'll do here in a second. So what I like about this design, because we have that cast aluminum underneath, it should be very precise on the distance between the two channels. So we'll run these down also, but not all the way, or at least not all the way tight. And if we go up, what we can do is we can grab the belt up here and spin it and bring the whole X axis down. Anyways, what we wanna do is just bring it down all the way. And actually guys, there are plugs here taped to the side that we need to release. That way we can move it all the way down. And the reason we want to get, you know, pretty close down is because we want to make sure that all of these rollers here are happy and the distance between the two channels is as close as it's going to get between the two separation before we tighten it all down. So this just gives it a more accurate place to start with, you know, not putting any pressure or being smaller here on the bottom and larger on the top. So, but yeah, all we got to do is tighten our bolts underneath and we can go ahead and snug these up really good. All right, and we are done with connecting the gantry onto the base. All right, so for the next part, let's go back and install the light bar, which will go up here. There's a couple bolts, and they are the m 58 And so this light bar simply just connects here to the front. Only thing here is be careful with the plugs or the wires, but yeah, it simply just lines up and the bolts go through the side into the channel. So we've got one bolt here and the other one on the other side. So yeah, these don't need to be too tight as it's just a light bar. And yeah, mostly what you gotta remember is not to grab this. It's not a handle, it's just a bar. Yeah, we have the wire here that's supposed to hook up. And it looks like the best place for it to go is just around the top here, just like that. Or however it works for you. And our light bar is on. And we have a little switch here we can turn it on and off. All right, so for the next part, we're gonna be installing the screen, which goes right here. And here it is in this electrostatic bag so the screen is attached to a bracket which pops right off and we're gonna have to install this part you guys can see the three holes with these m425 bolts so yeah again not very hard and there's some little grooves here that line up and it should just drop in and just like that and if you put anything together this should not be very hard at all all right and that's the third bolt so our holder is on and so there is a wire coming out the bottom and it plugs in right here but beside it you guys can see there's a sticker that says there's some kind of external looks like usb port or usb c that connects to something it says compensation port so yeah not too sure if that's an accessory or what but and it's gonna groove in just like that into the holder so let's go ahead and plug it in put it down and then slide it to clip it in and simple as that our screen is on and so for the next part we're going back to the top and installing the spool holder and also the wire clip and so that goes on the very top and the spool holder literally just clips around the channel and bites like this so so this is the front so we're looking at the back here so it literally go like this and then down so we do have a filament detector plug here we do get two spool holders that connect on each end I'm not sure why you'd want to have two of them, maybe just store them there or what? Yeah, I don't really recommend putting too much weight on top, but you do have two, I guess, with one filament detector. But yeah, it's as simple as just clipping to the front and then going down. 
But yeah, it literally just sits in the groove and goes down. So let's go ahead and plug in our filament detector. We do have a line here that shows us that it flows this way. So the wire does go kind of a little bit out of reach. So I guess we should go more to the side, kind of center up more. Now we can plug it in. And just like that yeah and our filament will sit here and then roll through the detector and then down to the hot end and speaking about the hot end let's go ahead and bring it back up and we'll flip around to this side here and that's actually where our wire clip here will go so it goes in with the hook going down like this and it slides in these rails around this metal piece here so just like this right up to the rails and it clips on there and it holds itself so and that's for the wire that travels up and there's actually a tag here that shows us that this piece goes around the clip. So, so right around this tag, theoretically, is where you want to connect it. And the other end will plug in into the hot end here on the side. And if you go all the way to the side there, we can see that it is enough, which looks good right there. There's also a little plug here underneath that says X on it. And that will go on this motor here underneath right there and if we go down more we can see one of our z-axis motors and the plug is taped down to the base and it does say z on there and we're going to plug that to this motor here and then on the other side we've got quite a few things going on here we actually have a little extension taped to the base and this is going to go from the motor into the junction box here where it says z so it is all labeled so we'll plug in one side into the motor and the other side here on the first plug closest to it which is the Z motor and then we got two more plugs and they're actually both different so you can't mess it up one of them looks like is for the light bar on the top and the other smaller one is for the filament detector and as simple as that guys we have everything connected on the printer and that was the last step there so yeah the only thing I realized I missed just by looking at it here is that this wire here actually tucks in here it's like a strain relief I'm gonna lower it down a little bit but yeah it's basically Got a little channel there that it snaps into and that relieves the strain from the plug. So yeah, make sure you do this. And that's pretty much how you install everything here on this printer. Now the cool part is, is that we don't have much to adjust because we have a linear rail here on the bottom and we also have a linear rail here that does not need to be adjusted and everything is pretty much perfect. So the only thing you do have adjustments is for the belt. So we have the Y belt here and it's actually tightened pretty well. And you got a knob here. And for the X belt, which is also tightened pretty well, you have a little allen wrench screw here that you can turn to tighten it and loosen it so you want to be very careful not making it too tight just slightly tight and that should be good so yeah and that's all really what we need to do except for maybe check your rollers here on the z-axis and mine are all pretty much perfect now if you do need to adjust it the eccentric nuts are on the inside and so these are just v-rollers that if you turn it you can go closer or farther away so these are a little tricky sometimes to adjust so if they're close and not crazy binding or anything weird just leave it alone we do have dual z axis so everything is very stable and they are tethered so yeah everything looks good here also that pretty much concludes the assembly of the cr10 se